Our next adventure takes us 360 kilometers north of Toronto to the city of North Bay, Ontario, Canada, and is part of the Nipissing District. North Bay has a population of over 51,000 people and the city developed as a railroad center. This will be the first time I've ever visited this city and thought it would be a great place to visit and experience together with you. Like the sights, the trails, waterfalls, and of course the many restaurants North Bay has to offer. If this van life adventure sounds like an exciting video that you want to watch, then grab something to eat, sit back, and enjoy this video. Made it all the way up to North Bay in Ontario. So I'm going to show you around some of the things I looked up. I found three restaurants that I really wanted to do between today and tomorrow. And uh, I was going to show you the, the lakefront and all that stuff. And one of the places when I got here was supposed to be Mr. Poncho. They're supposed to be open today. It is uh, Saturday. And uh, because they had such an amazing summer, apparently, uh, they are closed for another couple days, which isn't uh, so cool. So I got here, both open signs are not on, so I called them and uh, they're like, yeah, we're closed for another couple days because they're just letting all the staff have a holiday, which is great, that's fine. But uh, now I have to like quickly look and, and see what else is in the area that's close by. And there's this place called Lou Dogs Southern Barbecue North Bay. So let's go over there and they've got chicken and waffles. Well, let's go check it out. And apparently it's just down the street. Don't have to go too far. There we go, Lou Dogs. There it is, right over there. Let's go get some chicken and waffles. Taking out, yeah. See a menu? No, I got the chicken and waffles look like this is a pretty good thing on the menu. Yeah, that's good. What's the most ordered thing here? Um, for our brunch, the chicken and waffles. It is, eh? Oh, yeah. I nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good day. This is it. Chicken and waffles from Lou Dogs Southern Barbecue. All right, guys. I just cracked it open just a little bit, and the aroma, the smells of that deep fried chicken, and the sweetness of the waffle just came rushing through my nostrils. Oh my gosh. And they gave me some tater tots on the side. Oh, I'm going to fold that gonna fold that looks amazing doesn't it check that out wow i'm gonna be smothering that for sure and butter syrup and i guess we'll definitely be needing those uh wipes afterwards i'll throw that i'll throw that on there too all right let's get it all put together and start eating the main thing i'm hoping for that there's no bones in this chicken let's check out these tater tots first I'm guessing ketchup would have been nice. Oh, nice Cajun spice on those. Mmm, nice little kick. Nice and salty. Almost kind of want to finish these off before I start pouring syrup and stuff all over everything. It was very nice Cajun spices. Well done. I totally wasn't expecting these on the side. And they're amazing. Where to go, Lou? They had about, uh, I think, three families in there at tables. So obviously, it's a really nice family restaurant. It looks like it's set up for to be a full-on bar. They have a little stage in there, so they probably bring in talent from around the city and probably from around the area. Chances are, it's all country and western. I'm not one hundred percent sure if that's true or not. I'm just guessing, man. First time here. Hmm. Those are so good. Chances are they're uh, chicken thighs, I would imagine. You like It'd be better, obviously, eat it in the restaurant. Um, so I'm just going to pour uh, the syrup on, and we'll save these butters for another time because it it's going to be a disaster, I can tell right away. And I'm hoping this box 
totally handles this syrup in it. It looks like it is. It looks like it's uh, coated. So here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Pour it on. Pour it on that chicken thigh and that beautiful looking waffle. My goodness, Ken. Yeah. Good thing we have a couple uh, activities planned that will definitely help us burn some of this these calories and sugar oh my oh my that is going to be lovely i'm going to save it a little bit just in case uh the waffle sucks up some of that syrup let's eat lid back on let's just see if this is yeah this is whipped cream but because it was in the box with everything and just heat it up mm -hmm. i kind of don't even put whipped cream on your chicken i don't know let's let's just put it on i don't want to waste it it's lovely. It was a nice sweet taste in whipped cream. But again, I, I would not normally put it on. I think that's the first time I've ever been served whipped cream with chicken and waffles. But uh, let's get into it. Cut some of that chicken up. Get some of that waffle. Oh yeah, you gotta do them both at the same time for sure. Oh yeah, check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh my goodness. Oh, this is such a treat. Super crunchy chicken. Wow. Nice, sweet, fluffy tasting waffle. Super crunchy southern fried chicken. And you put that syrup on there. What a fantastic combination. I'm so glad I brought my own knife and fork. This is just one of those meals that is soul warming, isn't it? Let us know in the comments below if you love chicken and waffles as much as I love chicken and waffles. As soon as I saw that on the menu, I'm like, that's it. Going to lose. If I lived in North Bay, I would definitely eat here all the time. Hmm. But I definitely eat inside for sure. So far, no bones. That's a good thing. Just thought I'd show you a close-up of that chicken. It is juicy, it is fresh, it is yummy. Definitely check out Liz. And the waffle is nice and thick, Belgium-style waffle. I think in LA when I was at, I think it's called Roscoe's uh, Chicken and Waffle Place, and they used like a thin waffle, kind of like um, Waffle House, so. It's nice to change it up. I prefer the thin waffle, but this tastes just as good. Well, I was very disappointed that Mr. Poncho was closed, but because they were closed, it changed my adventure. And then I found Lou's and I uh, got to experience Lou's uh, waffles and chicken. And I'm so happy that Poncho's was closed, but we'll have to definitely come up to uh, North Bay again in the future and check out Poncho's when they're actually open. I'm going to finish the rest of this amazing meal up and then we'll take you on a hike to some really cool falls uh, just on the north end of the city. Cheers. Lake Nipissing is right over there. Unfortunately, there's a train track that kind of divides the city to the lake, but they have a memorial drive that goes down. Uh, you can cross down up just north of here, uh, but there's also a walkway that you can go under the train uh, tracks and then out into the open uh, where all the beaches and stuff are. Let's go check that out and then we'll go for our hike uh, to the waterfalls.
hope you guys enjoy that little walk around the waterfront. You can see all the Anuk shooks that the people build. Uh, with two legs, usually a little body, arms and a head. Sometimes they build other structures, uh, very artistic and creative. And it's just a lot of fun to do. Uh, but of course, it's, they're being pounded by the waves today. And uh, there's also a carousel over there. A lot of things are closed now. It's Saturday afternoon, but I'm, I'm guessing because the summer's over, uh, they've closed down a lot of the like touristy type things. So didn't get to see that, but uh, yeah, let's go to our hike and see the waterfalls. It's not a great day, but uh, we'll make the best of it. I figure as we make our way to the, the waterfalls, uh, I thought I'd just kind of drive around town quickly, show you what the downtown core looks like. Nice church on the right there. And this is Main Street, so we'll turn left. And uh, you guys can see what the main, that very old looking uh, motel off to the right there. Very, very old town. Needs a little bit of a fixer upper on this road. It's all done with bricks. game sports bar driving schools subway this is probably like the main four corners possibly nice little raised sidewalk on the right are closing up their shops it's a nice little park on the loft there that's where mr. poncho is and that ladies and gentlemen is like the downtown core made it to the trailhead part of my French but I think it's called Duchene uh, Falls trails it's 1.5 kilometers elevation is 170 meters it is a loop I love loop trails and uh, you get to see something different all the way around. And uh, let's go check out these falls and uh, get some good pictures. Let's go. Those falls were absolutely stunning. And that was right at the beginning of the trail. So I got all that other rest of the distance to go. I'm already sweating, climbing up and down those rocks. I shouldn't have wore a flannel shirt on a hike like this, but it looked like it was gonna be cold today. Check that out. Gorgeous. Bridges out. Got to find another way around. Looks like uh, there's a little path going this way. Well, I've walked quite a bit of distance north, and I came from that direction in the bushes, bushwhacking the whole way. And there's no way across unless I take my shoes and socks off, which I think I'm going to have to do. But I got this thing, and I really don't want to drop it in the river. 
Don't know how slippery it is. Jeez. Wow. That was crazy hike. Crazy hike. So I uh, got to one of the farthest points north and uh, you start to go across and there's no bridge. And so you see little trails going off uh, that way and that way along the river. And so I uh, followed the one going that way for quite a while. And then there'd be rocks going across, but some of them would be submerged. And again, I had that really expensive camera with me and I didn't want to drop in the water. I didn't want to fall in the water. So I just, I kept going and going and going. And then I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I can't find any crossing at all. And it was getting, the bush was getting thicker and thicker and thicker. And uh, so I just decided to turn around and start coming back, got back to the, the busted bridge, started going along the, um, the river this way. And then I got to the point where the, the bush is like leaning over and your left foot uh, steps on one part of the branch and then the other part of the branch is rooted into the ground and your right foot catches and it flops you down. And I'm like, ah, I'm getting all mad and, and uh, can rage. And uh, so I get up and I start to walk for a bit and I'm like, my glasses are all foggy and I go to touch my glasses and they're not on my head. I'm like, oh my God, I am in the bushes and my glasses are gone and I won't be able to find them because I don't have my glasses on. So I turn on my flashlight and uh, on my phone and I, I, I went back around and went through in the direction I went trying to find that spot where I fell. And I just was like walking really slowly like with like a, uh, like a detective and looking for the evidence. And uh, luckily these have that red on it. And I noticed the red just under some leaves. And uh, so I'm extremely happy about that. And uh, so as soon as I found my glasses, I beelined it back for the broken bridge. And then there was a path that went out to a road, uh, like an old dirt road or a service road to some hydro lines. And I just walked that all the way back because I just I was tired of uh, falling down and tripping and uh, just not being able to cross the river and finishing that loop. I really wanted to finish the loop. And I guess if the water level was a little bit lower, then some of the, more of those rocks would have been exposed, dry, easy to step on. But you're always worried about that one that's loose and you're gonna fall and nobody's around. When you're by yourself, when I'm by myself like that, I do not take risks like that. Anyway, so uh, it is now pouring rain, as you may or may not be able to tell. Uh, so I'm going to Freshen up, turn my fan on because it's freaking hot in here and uh, change my shirts. I've got like wet wipes so I can like clean myself off and I don't think I ripped anything, which is good. And uh, then we'll go get dinner. Gonna have a steak dinner, it's gonna be good. Well, it's around six minutes after six and I've finally cooled down. It seems like it's still raining. This parking lot emptied pretty fast. Time to head back into town. Uh, I'm gonna to be going to the station tap house and steak company. I'm gonna be grabbing their curried mussels as an appetizer and then getting their Canadian Prime 14 ounce ribeye grilled and seasoned with smoked applewood rub. Let's do it. Fantastic dinner. Looking forward to this one too. Made it over to the station and had to park by this uh, one way road. And uh, we'll go and get our food and then we'll come back here and eat it with you guys. See if it's any good. <laughs> Hi. Hi there. Just wondering if I can get something to go. We're not doing takeout tonight. No takeout tonight. No, we got a full restaurant and the chef's not here, so I can't, oh do, my a, God. I can't do a takeout. Good luck. <laughs> we're doing okay right now, don't jinx it. Yeah. I'm very right. sorry, sir. Normally, right. we, we, earlier in the night, we probably could have, just not, not now. Okay, thank you. I'm very sorry. That's right. Wow. I am having zero, zero luck today, people. Jeez. Poncho's closed. Or, yeah, this place. The chef didn't show up. He says they're managing, but they can't do takeout today or tonight. What a shame. I was so looking forward to those muscles. Wow, sorry about the cameras, got fogged up or something. Oh man, I'll have to uh, do another search and hopefully uh, it's a good search 
like what happened uh, for Mr. Poncho and then we found Luz. So let me do a little quick search and we'll find something else to eat for dinner tonight. Still at the station, I found a place called Cecil's and it's uh, prime rib weekends right now. So let's give them a call. Thank you for calling Cecil's first. How are you? Good, how are you? <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys still have uh, some prime rib left for me? Yes, but oh. we don't have anything available until after eight o'clock for seating. Oh, okay. What about takeout? Um, it'll probably be about an hour and a half. Okay, never mind. Thank you. No problem. Have a good night. Mate, you too. Yeah, um, yeah. Things things are not looking up for Ken right now. Just kind of looked all over the the city to try and find something that I feel like eating right now. Uh, there is a sushi place. There is a Chinese place. There's an Indian place. There's a lot of food uh, here in uh, North Bay, but uh, I really wanted steak. And then that prime rib looked good. I don't think I could wait till eight o'clock. Um, hmm. I'll figure it out. Well, I found a place at the south end of uh, North Bay, and it's called the Crown and Beaver Pub. Uh, I'm probably going to have to eat inside. Uh, if there's music or whatever, uh, I'll have to shoot it with my iPhone and I do a voiceover afterwards. But it's just getting darker and darker, and I don't have any lights with me here. Uh, I thought I'd be able to get all my stuff done in the daylight and, uh, and not have to worry about sitting here. See how dark that is? That's not cool. So uh, let's go over to the Crown and Beaver Pub. Maybe we can sit inside. It is Saturday night. They're open, or they close at, at 9. It is 6.46 right now. Ah, oh, the day just keeps getting crazier. All right, let's just go. Hello. Looking at all this food, uh, I think I've uh, gravitated towards this Crown and Beaver Steak Burger, 16 bucks, hand chopped triple A, top sirloin, chef seasoned with no fillers, patty cooked to a medium doneness, topped with lettuce, tomato, onion, and pickles, all between a potato scallion roll. And I think I'm going to also do uh, the sauteed mushrooms to add to that. Cool? Yeah, that's cool. Beaver. All right, guys, my dinner is here. Check out the size of that burger. There's my hand. That's the size of the burger. I went with blue cheese on there, bacon, and sauteed mushrooms. I went to obviously fries. Nicely done. And she she upsold me on the gravy. This is called, uh, I think it's called Koosh beer. Fantastic beer. And uh, that bun looks fantastic too. So I'm gonna uh, doctor that up. Check that out. Just do a nice close up of it. Nice thick patty. Oh boy. I don't think I'm gonna get my mouth around that at all. Does that look good or what? Just set the phone up on the table. Pull out this skewer. Oh my gosh. I'm not sure if I'm gonna... It's a, it's a crazy huge burger. Now we have to squish it as best we can. Sorry about the uh, camera, it doesn't do a wide angle like that. This blue cheese smells amazing. Mm. The blue cheese was the perfect thing to add. The waitress said she liked the goat cheese on there, but the burger patty itself is nicely seasoned. Well cooked. The sauteed mushrooms are coming through nicely. You have to let the juices of your burger drip all over your fries so you can enjoy them with a great taste of burger flavors. <laughs> Perfect timing, thank you. <laughs> mm. I finally got a big crunch and taste of that bacon. 
So the Crown and Beaver Pub make an amazing burger, and I dress it up perfectly. I'm gonna finish all this stuff up, and then we'll get out of here. Ken, once again, gets the Clean Plate Award. Just came outside to try and get in my van, which is way over there, and this black cloud just came over, started to pour on. Should we go for it? See, every once in a while it just bursts down, it just comes down really hard. Make sure I unlock the car. All right. Perfect, let's go. Oh my goodness. Just a slight break in the, in the rain. Put my mask down. So just to remind some people who don't live in Canada if the establishment says can you please wear a mask you have to wear a mask so that's why we keep wearing masks in the establishments as you can see me walking around town and stuff not wearing a mask you don't need to wear a mask outside just when you go into people's establishment so that's why we're doing it. oh so I noticed when I was driving around town that the Trans Canada Highway is just over here which is the highway that goes right across Canada um, and there was a plaza over there and I saw some RVs, motorhomes parked there. So I'm guessing that they're um, camping there tonight in that uh, parking lot. So I'm gonna go park uh, close to them and we'll be like a little group of uh, pioneers and our stage coaches. We'll do like a circle and keep ourselves protected. Let's go over there and uh, we'll set up camp and uh, we'll go to bed. So there is the Northgate Shopping Center. And I believe over there somewhere is the, uh, the RV. So I'm gonna, park somewhere close to them because they obviously maybe know that you can park there overnight. We'll see. So it looks like a bunch of RVs and it's a, it's a Walmart parking lot, which is part of this mall. And uh, there are small RVs, large RVs, a trailer pulling in. It's Camp Central here. And you can see everybody, people are definitely in every single one of those. You can see lights on. That guy has got his antenna up. So he's watching some Netflix or something. And th this is a very sweet looking rig, eh? I think they're like a hundred and depending on what you put in it, like $170,000, very expensive. Yeah, I don't know how much some of those other cars are. I'm gonna uh, just park her right here. This is a good spot. Join all the other RVs. There's another RV over there. We're gonna fit right in. Thanks, Walmart. Camping once again at Walmart, along with a bunch of other people. It's gonna make me feel way safer knowing that uh, people just know that people just camp here. So I'm not even gonna put up my stealth windows, don't need to. So let's get ready for bed. <coughs> it's getting not too late, but just late enough. Kick off the shoes. Got lots of shoes this time. And, uh, Got my uh, GoPro batteries plugged into the jack reed. It's still got tons of tons of power. But uh, yeah, no stealth windows today, guys. Don't need them. Well, guys, I had a pretty good day today. Although, you know, the first place was closed unexpectedly. And the second place that I chose, uh, the chef didn't show up. So they couldn't accommodate me on takeout. Oh my goodness, what a crazy day. And I lost my glasses for like 10 minutes in the in the woods. <laughs> what, a, what a crazy, crazy day. Unbelievable. And I just realized I'm going to have to move my car because there's a tree right behind me. And I'm not sure if you guys can see this, but the tree is actually scratching on my window. And that will just freak me out in the middle of the night. So I'm going to move my car one spot over and then we'll be good. So thanks for hanging out with me today and we'll see you in the morning. Have a good night. Bye. Before we go to bed, guys, uh, this is interesting. I just happened to look up and there was a guy walking from the Walmart and he like walking towards my car and then he walked over to the, the RV that was parked here and knocked on their door and he talked to them for a bit and then he walked right past my vehicle to that vehicle who's now started his engine, knocked on their vehicle. Now he knocked on this one that one and i think he's saying that nobody's allowed to park in this area 
uh, but there's a bunch of RVs parked way over there. And I'm thinking he's telling them all, all to move, but because I'm in a car, he didn't think that anybody's sleeping in here. So uh, I'm gonna follow suit and uh, move my vehicle over to where the other RVs are. Um, I'm guessing we're just in the wrong spot. That's a beautiful RV, man. I really like that one. That's the Ram one, kind of like the Sprinter. Um, yeah, so I guess he's telling everybody to move and everybody's moving. So it's our turn. There goes another one. Whoop, there, there's the uh, the employee. I guess they don't want people parking in this. It's funny because this whole area is, there's no way it's gonna be used up, but I guess the rules are rules. I'm gonna follow the rules and park where everybody else is parking. When it's wet and stuff, it's really hard to see these little uh, median things. I've, I've almost drove into one, but wasn't it wasn't like it was close or anything. So look, here's the RV park, <laughs> the Walmart RV park. Yeah, we'll just have to find our spot. Oh my goodness, there's a little what they call them, Silver Stream, or look at that beautiful trailer. Oh my goodness, that's a toaster. I love it. I love it. Oh, that's so cool. So yeah, everybody's finding their spots here. One of the rules I was under the impression was you're not allowed to do your bump outs or your push outs, whatever they call them in RVs. You can't just set up camp and have your, uh, your chairs all set up outside. Uh, you have to be in a parking spot and you can't have your bump outs uh, out the side to make your RV bigger, more room. But looks like people do it anyway. I'm not sure somebody's gonna go knock on their door. The guy on, along the uh, road there, he had one of his bump outs done. You do a little quick peek at all the different kind of RVs. Here's like a homemade one. There's the really expensive one, and here's like a homemade one. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, this is the spot, guys. Done. Yeah. And I love that trailer. <laughs> guys it is a lovely day little clouds over there uh, the sun is now 100% up uh, there's still quite a few RVs and things in the area that guy's still there he's got his little chair set up he was having his coffee this morning and uh, relaxing and uh, looking at his phone and stuff so I found the spot over there actually quite close to us called Burger World and they have a thing called the ultimate omelet and uh, I can't wait to try that. It's got bacon, ham, sausage, onions, red and green peppers, tomatoes, mushrooms and cheese for $13.19. And uh, they are open today uh, from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. So I'm going to change, wash up, get ready, put some new clothes on and uh, we'll head out. All changed, let's go eat. Beautiful day. Nice. Heater on. It's only 13 degrees out there, so gotta put a little bit of heat into the vehicle. A little bit more. There, there you go. Open. Sweet. Oh, 
Hello. Good morning. Uh, I'd love to try your ultimate omelet. Ultimate omelet. And uh, large coffee black, please. Uh, for the ultimate omelet, do you want white brown or rice toast? Uh, let's go uh, brown toast. Brown? Okay, and do you want grilled corn fries or seasoned deep fried? Let's do the first one. Grilled ones? Okay, yeah. do you want fried onions on them? Uh, yes, please. And is that everything? That is everything. Perfect, so it's $14.91. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys, back in the car. This breakfast smells amazing. But let's first get out the trusty steering wheel tray and start eating. I'm going to uh, set it all up. Oh, okay, that's the toast. We got the toast in the bag. I guess it doesn't fit in here. Oh my goodness, look at that. It's like lava. Oh, I'm so glad I ordered my potatoes like that. Nice. Here it is, breakfast in North Bay at Burger World. We got our coffee steaming away. We got our nine ketchups over here and over here and under there. <laughs> we got our toast. And then we got these potato potatoes that are like just, I guess, fried up with some onions in it, which was a nice option. And then look at this ultimate uh, omelet. Look at that. It's like lava flowing. It looks wonderful. That is definitely going to fill me up. It would fill pretty much anybody up. All it needs right now is a little pepper, a little salt, and then we're good to go. Oh, my goodness. I cannot wait to eat that. Let's do our salt. Do our pepper. Got to love pepper on my eggs. And on my potatoes. All right, just do a quick sip of this coffee. Free coffee has to be good. Not very strong, which is good. Don't like killer strong coffee first thing in the morning. And uh, let's get into this these potatoes. Nice and golden brown. Haven't had potatoes like that in a long time, man. That is nice. Way to go, Burger World. Cheers, guys. Mmm. Nice. Lots of amazing flavors in there. Lots of cheese. What a fantastic way to start your day. Staff in there was very friendly, very accommodating, very patient. <laughs> mm, that's so good. Almost every bite has a different flair to it because it's like the ingredients get all pushed around. Look how gooey that cheese pull. When was the last time we had a cheese pull? Not for a bit, but we definitely get them, don't we? Usually on a poutine, though. Beautiful day. Beautiful breakfast. I forgot to ask you last night, uh, did you guys like when I went into the restaurant and ate in the restaurant? And if you want to see more of that, let me know in the comments below. Or do you like me doing all my stuff in the van, uh, getting it, bringing it out? It'd be interesting to know. So the biggest problem with eating inside restaurants usually is music. Uh, they usually are playing music. Sometimes it's really loud. Last night it wasn't too bad. And if I put an underlying audio track, uh, it confuses YouTube and, and, and can't copyright uh, the video. Um, so that's the reason I don't like usually going into restaurants. Uh, and then there's also that awkwardness of uh, the staff wondering why you're videotaping uh, you eating food in their restaurant. So I forgot to put my ketchup on. All nine packs. Now I'm gonna keep some. Rusty's gonna have. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use up two of my packs on these potatoes. <laughs> I remember reading some of your comments on one of the other videos because I put the ketchup on the fries, and they're like, "Oh, I don't do that. I'm a dipper. I'm not a pourer." And it's just like, well, the ketchup's right there, and I'd rather. 
Oh, I guess I could have squirted, squirted it all into a corner. So once again, guys, let me know in the comments below what you prefer, in the vehicle or inside the restaurant. Look at that fork full of that beautiful breakfast. Mm -hmm. Just to let you guys know on the breakfast menus, uh, Eggs Benedict is, as you probably already know, my number one go-to when I go to a place like this. See Eggs Benedict on the on the board or on the, uh, the menu, I always order that. Uh, number two would probably be uh, like an ultimate omelet. I love omelets. Um, and then it would probably drop to like waffles and pancakes and things like that. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite breakfast item, well, besides coffee. I drink this more than I do eat breakfast. But when I do eat a breakfast, it's usually the Eggs Benedict or an omelet. But let us know what you guys like. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I really hope you enjoyed this food tour up here in North Bay. I enjoyed it a lot. Love this town. There's a lot more food to do, so I'd like to come back in the near future and eat a few more places, especially uh, Mr. Poncho's and that steak place that we missed out on last night. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure we missed out on an amazing meal. Uh, but we had another amazing meal at a place that I probably might not have gone to uh, if it wasn't for those two places closing and eating at two new places. So at least we have a few places for the next time we come up here. Uh, let me know uh, how soon you guys would love me to come back here and do those two places. And uh, I'll make sure that they're open before I come up. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your support. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.